Through this analysis, we review what risks we associate with a potential investment in GeoPacific and highlight what steps the company is taking to mitigating these risks. GeoPacific announced the progressive earning acquisition of the Woodlark Gold Project in mid-2016. GeoPacific, however, negotiated highly favourable terms with no direct consideration payable as part of the transaction, as the company will earn their interest by meeting a number of predetermined development targets. But despite the excellent deal terms, there is a risk that GeoPacific may fall short of their maximum ownership target if milestones are not achieved. We therefore reviewed the two major ownership milestones and the likelihood of achieving a successful outcome. The first target is to increase the project's reserve from around 800,000 ounces to over 1.2 million ounces of gold. Drilling has just commenced at Woodlark Island. This is a three drill rig program with two diamond rigs and one RC rig. The aim of this project is to move the current 800,000 ounce reserve base up to 1.2 million. We see that this will go to mid next year and take about 15,000 metres of drilling. The focus of the drilling is at Kulamadau and Busai. Kulamadau is an area where we see huge potential to increase the reserve base, both a long strike and at depth, but particularly within the current pit area. Busai also has incredible potential to increase the reserve base of the project by converting resources that are currently in pit, but inferred into reserve category. In addition to the drill program, there are multiple other factors which affect the size of the reserve. And given the size of the resource, the change in economic conditions since the previous reserve statement, as well as the aggressive drill program, we believe it is likely that the initial milestone target will be achieved. The other major ownership target is to advance the project through to a positive bankable feasibility study. We're currently spending a lot of time looking at the operational costs of the project. We see considerable savings here with power generation. We're looking at LPG as one option, which should lower power generation costs significantly. We're also looking at redesigning the mill to use a better processing circuit to reduce power consumption. When your power generation costs are 60% of the operational costs, this is significant. The more that we can lower those operational costs, the lower our in-pit cutoffs will be, the more ore that we will get out of the pits. This will also dramatically affect the strip ratio, and we're looking at being able to halve the strip ratio from the current 9 to 1 figures. All of these will produce significantly better project economics. On the CapEx side, rebasing the costs from the original 2010 study are progressing well and we see that there are huge savings in the way the plant was going to be constructed and how we would run the operation available to us. All these things will help advance the project forward quickly. So with work on both major milestones underway, it appears that GeoPacific not only has a clear strategy to meet both of these targets, but we also believe it is likely they can be achieved during 2017. For any development project, one of the major risks is related to project finance. We therefore reviewed the company's ability to raise both debt and equity for the project's development. Debt financing is never an easy process, as there are numerous conditions that have to be met before funds can be obtained. A key historical issue for the project was the relatively short mine life in relation to the high capital cost. However, extending the mine life is the first ownership target for GeoPacific, whilst we believe the capital costs are likely to decrease when the revised study is released. A tool debt providers use to test the project's robustness is known as the debt service cover reserve ratio. The minimum DSCR for a mining project is usually around 1.6. And as shown in the graph, this ratio is exceeded throughout the life of the loan. The balance of funds for the project's development will come from the equity capital markets. The company's ability to raise funds will be down to the strength of the revised DFS and the prevailing market conditions at the time. We however draw comfort from the company's ability to raise funds over the past number of years, 
Most recently, the $15 million raising for the Woodlark project in mid-2016. GeoPacific is also in the enviable position of having two resource funds as major shareholders. Having both groups as cornerstone investors significantly reduces the risk for project development as it is probable they will continue to support the company with future capital raisings. The final risk we assess is the project's location. Woodlark is a remote island in Papua New Guinea. Predictably, the infrastructure on the island is limited, which presents unique challenges. However, this will not be the first project to face these challenges, and more importantly, GeoPacific's management team has built operations in similar locations before. In addition, as Papua New Guinea is a developing nation, there is some historical political instability. However, the country's long history in the gold mining sector with established laws and numerous multi-million ounce gold operations, highlights that whilst the country may have issues in other sectors, the mining industry, due to its importance for the national economy, has remained relatively stable.